Hi, welcome to my channel. A few videos back, I finger crocheted this cushiony marshmallow chair, and I wanted something fun to go with it. I had a bunch of extra felt from my hat head beret video that I wanted to make use out of, so I came up with this little felt throw rug. I've always liked the look of Mille Fiore style glasswork, and I have a couple pieces I've collected over the years to show you here. It's made from little rods of colored glass bundled together that when melted and cut at a cross section, forms patterns. You'll often see patterns with lots of flowers because the Italian to English translation of Mille Fiore means thousand flowers. While you can use a pair of scissors to cut your strips, I used this clear quilting ruler that has markings on the clear part and a metal straight edge along one side, along with a rotary cutter to quickly cut clean edge strips that all measure the same width. The length can vary, but the widths should all be the same half inch. I worked on a self-healing cutting mat to maintain the sharpness of my blade. In addition to the strips, you'll also need a hot glue gun and some glue sticks, a pair of scissors, a piece of backing fabric, I'm using burlap, it has a nice open flexible weave, and something to mark it with, and some trim to go around the edge of your rug. I'm using this 5 8 inch frayed edge grosgrain ribbon. One thing to mention before moving on is that this glue gets really, really hot and your fingers will be quite close to it, so please be careful to avoid burning yourself. And at points, if not for the entire time, you'll need some protection while pressing down on your work. These silicone finger caps work well, and I also use this silicone mat under the glue gun when I set it down to catch any drips, which is handy, but you can also use a piece of scrap paper. I'll put a supplies list along with links in the description. Once you've made a bunch of strips, you can start on the individual rolls that make up the rug. I worked on this project a little at a time, making a few rolls a day over the course of a month or so. I wanted to have lots of flowers. Some of them are repeated throughout, and some are unique. It's a good idea to make rolls of different shapes, some round, some pointed, some squarish, so you'll have options to pick from when fitting them all together later on. I'll show you a few techniques for making some of the rolls I used throughout the rug. To make a daisy type flower, I made seven small rolls, six white ones for the petals and one yellow one for the center. that are all roughly the same diameter by tightly rolling a coil and then securing the end with a dot of hot glue, and once it's dried, cutting the remaining tail. If you have a short piece, you can keep the coil in place with a straight pin while gluing like this. Then one at a time, I glued the petals around the yellow center, giving them a little squeeze to fit them all into place. And then I wrapped the flower in a long black strip like this, gluing every so often and pressing in between the petals. In places where I used a lot of glue to speed up the drying, I used this metal tool from my grommet setting kit from my beret video to press on the glue and cool it down. Even if you don't have one of those, you can use other metal objects you have lying around to draw heat away from the glue. To make a pointy star shape, I make a fold, leaving a small flap on the end, and I put a little glue inside the fold to keep it in place. Then I make another glued fold, the same size as the one I just did, and repeat that process two more times. When I have five points, I put some glue in the center to keep it all together, and I also glue between the small flap from the beginning and the long tail, and I end up with this little five-pointed star. I use the remaining strip to make one more layer wrapping around the entire outline, putting a little glue here and there to secure it in place. When I run out of felt, I add a new strip right next to the old one and keep working until I've made a complete layer, cutting off any excess felt if needed at the end. To turn the star into a pansy type flower, I make one layer in dark purple, cut off the excess, and follow it with a few rounds of lavender. You can make variations with fewer or many more points like I did here with these other examples in the corner. To make a heart, I took one strip and wound each end into a coil of equal size. There should be an unwound section between the two rolls. Then I made kind of like a letter M shape. I glued down a little fold on each end and cut off the remaining tail. Then it gets folded in the middle. and then it's inserted between the two coils on the other piece like this. I settled it in place and a little glue in between will keep it all together. Then I wrap the heart in a few layers of cream colored felt followed by a few layers of pink, gluing a little bit at a time until I got to the end. After you've made a whole bunch, you'll be ready to start gluing them together. You'll see with each piece there is usually a nice side and a messier glued side. Keep all the nice sides facing the same way. I found it worked best to find a couple pieces that fit snugly next to each other and starting from the center working outward, fit them together like a jigsaw puzzle until you get to your desired size. 
check that the piece you want to attach will fit well before putting glue on it. I tried to space the repeating rolls like the hearts around the entire rug. And I made use out of rolls of different shapes to fit everything together. I found the circular rolls that were just concentric rings to be the squishiest and could fit best between the harder to reach spaces. I really like the way the rolls make curvy edges on this rug and gave some extra attention to fill them out here and there until I was totally satisfied with the arrangement. Then with the nice side facing up, I lay it on top of the burlap and trace the outline. I used this disappearing fabric pen, but you can also use a pencil. Then remove the felt and make a bead of hot glue along the inside of the traced outline. This will keep your fabric from fraying, especially if you're working with something that unravels easily, like the burlap I'm using. Next, cut out around the outer edge of the hot glue. Flip the felt over so the nice side is facing down and the messy side is facing up. Since the glue dries so quickly, you'll need to glue the felt to the backing a little at a time from one end to the other, taking care that the edges of both pieces line up. Using the finger caps to keep my hands safe, I smoothed and pressed down on the glued area with each application of glue. Use extra caution on this part, especially if you're using a lightweight or open weave backing fabric like I am. Then I went around the entire outline with my ribbon, gluing it down a little at a time. I finished it off by lightly gluing the edge of the ribbon to seal the frayed cut, let it dry, and stopped the trim in a crease to hide the joined ribbon ends. There's so much going on with this rug visually that any gaps aren't very noticeable, but if you like, you can fill them in by poking little pieces of matching colored felt into the holes and gluing them in place. And that's the Millefiore felt rug. I'll be posting more videos soon, and in the meantime, swing by my brand new shop that's got a bunch of fun designs, which I'll link to in the description. If you enjoyed this project, check out some of my others, and subscribe if you'd like to stay up to date on new videos as they come out. Thanks for watching, and see you next time!